Welcome to the Accelerate Church weekly broadcast. We are so glad you've tuned in and we believe you'll be strengthened and encouraged as Pastor Jeremy File continues his sermon series on the basis of the word. Get a notebook, get a pen, get your Bible and be ready to receive right now as we tune in to this service already in progress. If the enemy can steal the word, then you don't base your life on that. So then you're living not on the basis of the word, but on opinion. And that's a good way to experience heartache after heartache after heartache. So what happens? The enemy, he values the word. Do you notice this? The Bible, Jesus speaking here in Luke 8, 12, the devil comes and takes away the word out of their heart. In other words, he don't mind you mentally acknowledging it, but he does not want the word to become a part of your life. Just like your right arm goes with you everywhere you go, that, the word should be with you everywhere you go, all the time, all the time. The word should be right there with you all the time, all the time. Once that happens, see, the devil's like, I got to get that word out from their heart. So one of the big ploys he uses is offense. Because he's after the word. See, people are almost too stupid. I, I hate this. I'm not dissing people. It's just crazy because they don't get it. The enemy's after the word while people are like, well, they hurt my feelings. Well, they said this. Well, they, they done that. Well, they post a lie. It's like the enemy's after the word. And you, know, you, you got to get where well, you're not dumber than the devil. And you got to value the word more than he does. Why? Lest they should believe and be saved. Look at that. You see the salvation promise in this verse right here to the wayside hearers. Isn't that amazing? And why do so many people not walk in the salvation package that Jesus already purchased for them? Because they let the devil steal the word. They let the devil steal the word. So you get out here in life. You listen to the wrong voice and here's what happens. Deception is going to be believable. The Bible literally says in Timothy, They'll turn their ears away from truth. Remember that verse? And they'll be turned to fables. So the only thing you can turn to when you turn from the truth is a fable. A fable has a little bit of truth, a big old fat piece of meat of error, and then a little bit of truth. But if it didn't have those two ends of truth, you wouldn't receive it. And so what happens? When the devil comes to steal the word, he's going to come in a way you're not expecting. Not with the pitchfork, not with the horns and the red pointy suit, pointy tail suit. He's going to come with a little bit of truth mixed with some error, mixed with some truth. And you're like, yeah, but that's pretty convincing. That's pretty good. That's very believable. But it's deception. And I'm telling you what I said Wednesday night is true. Diverse seeds will corrupt your field. You have too many voices speaking into you. You're going to have people and you don't even know what they believe. So you don't even know what they believe. People live this way all the time. I'll just go to church whatever I feel like going. Well, do you know what that guy believes? Well, no, I'm just getting to know him. Well, I get amazed by it. I'm not, I'm not being weird. I'm just telling you. You might forget that I've been in this city since 1995. I know at least 25 other pastors here. I'm not trying to be rude, but all I'm trying to say about it is, no, no, they're not my best friends I hang out with all the time. But when you pray with some of them and you hang out with some of them, you get to know what they're like. Kind of like when I hang out with you. And I get to know what their influences are. And as I've continued to grow in my walk with God, I start realizing they don't have the same father influences I've got. They don't have the same spiritual fathers, the same DNA I've got. They, they don't have the same upbringing of the word that the word is it. They, they just start going by what they see out here. Not everybody, not all of them. There's good ones here, but I'm, what I'm saying is this. You just got to be careful. If it's that way with pastors, then it's that way with Christians. What's amazing to me, though, is just people don't even act like this verse exists. What is the devil after? The word. So, you know, in partnership class yesterday, I start out in partnership class, and I'll refresh your memory for those that hadn't been through in a while. We are a word church at Accelerate Church. That's the very first thing I say. Why? Because if you really want to sum this church up, we're pointing people to the word. That's it. The word. Follow the word. Follow the word. If this is the last time you ever hear my voice, please follow the word. 
I've told people that when I knew they're leaving, I said, if this is the last time we ever talk, follow the word and we'll see each other down the road somewhere. All you got to do is follow the word. Because whatever things you can't control, this may be the last time you hear me. Hey, guess what? Follow the word. We'll see each other someday. If you really want to just sum this up, follow the word. Yeah, but I'm dealing with, who cares? Follow the word. Follow the word. And watch what happens. If you believe it, you're going to be saved from any situation. The ones that are on the rock, Luke 8, 13, Jesus speaking, who when they hear, so they hear the word too. Wayside hears, rock ground hears. See, this tells me something. You being here hearing could be the most dangerous thing you do. It's not a guarantee that just because you're here, even shouting amen or writing notes, that the word's going to take root in you. Now, I will say this since I brought up notes. One way for them to get rooted, the word to get rooted, is to take notes so that you go back and meditate on this day and night. That's what you're supposed to do with this book of the law, the word of God. Meditate on it day and night. Let it sink and get down deep on the inside of you. Well, that, that's someone that's going to end up being a legit Christian that will do that. These light, Christian lights, they hear real light. They, the word doesn't really take deep root in them. It's real light. It's kind of like my grass that looks burned out. Because the roots hadn't got down deep. If you don't remember, I moved a couple years ago. I told that story. I moved to all the grass. It was green. It was amazing. But I asked the previous owner, who's a great, great man. I said, hey, uh, you know, how would you get so green? Well, I watered it all night long. All night long. Well, I go talk to the grass expert, which is not me, but down at the Red Barn on Coulter Street. And the guy says over there to me, he says, well, the root system is not going to be good if he watered all night long. In fact, what you're going to see is it dry up. And I saw it dry up. And I said, oh, no. He said, you got you a good three-year work ahead of you to get the root system healthy again. I said, isn't that interesting? Wow. Well, why are you bringing that up? You're talking about your grass again, preacher. Well, because the word of God is eternal in nature. Grass withers. But it's amazing. People know more about how to get their grass to grow than they do how to get the word to grow. But I'm going to tell you this. It's got to get rooted in you. I'm talking deep. Can't be this shallow stuff. Look, the ones on the rock, they hear, they receive the word with joy. So far, so good. <laughs> I heard somebody years ago teach all this and they said, that's why. <laughs> they didn't say it like this, but this is what they were implying. You shouldn't be joyful when you hear the word. I think you should be joyful. <laughs> that part's good. You ought to be excited to hear the word of God because you know the power of the word of God. The joy is not the problem. It's the no root. <laughs> no root. So the word never takes root. Never becomes a part of them. They believe for a while. But in the time of temptation, King James, adversity, tribulation, pressure, they fall away. Isn't that something? So that means, you know, you can be here, amen, you can be, yeah, I'm holding to the word. But we'll see when the pressure's on what you're really made of. Verse 14. Now the ones that fell among thorns. I'm not trying to depress you today. Jesus is speaking this for a reason. The ones on the thorns, they heard. They all have that in common. They go out. They're choked with cares, riches, and pleasures of life, and bring no fruit to maturity. Now, I just want you to meditate on this verse before we move too quick. Notice it's going to take time to bear fruit in the kingdom. Accelerate Church has opened its doors to a second location located at 1300 East Central Avenue in Amarillo. The Word of God is thundering forth every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and every Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. from seasoned ministers here at Accelerate. If you live in the area, we invite you to join us for power-packed services each week and bring the entire family. We have something for the little ones too. God is building strong families and we would love for your family to join us. If you haven't been taught that you're going to have to cast the cares of life, those cares are going to choke the word out. Just the cares of life, living life. See, that's not even sin. Do you catch this? That is not saying it's sin. It's the cares of life. Riches and pleasures of life 
had the ability to choke out the parent force of the universe in your heart. In the ground of your heart. So we better be on guard and be on duty and start realizing um, life's about a lot more than just pleasure, riches, cares. Hey, there's some things you're going to have to care for. By the way, the more stuff you have, the more cares you have. The more distractions you have. And what do you think the enemy will try to use those things for? To keep the word from taking root in your heart. Because once the word takes root, it's over for him. (laughs) That makes me want to laugh. Once the word takes root, you start bringing forth fruit to maturity. Once you say, I'm absolute, not moving from this word. I don't care who it separates me from, who it puts me with. I'm sticking with the word. Get ready because you're going to start seeing fruit. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Popped out another apple. Praise God. Why? Because you didn't quit. The temptation to quit is to get all the fruit out of your life. When you face the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, all he's looking for is fruit. What did you do with this stewardship of life that I gave you? What did you do with it? What have you done with it? Think about that for just a minute. Luke 8 verse 15. But the ones that fell on good ground, say it again by faith, that's me. They have heard the word. So you're in the right place at the right time. You're hearing the word. So far, it's the same as all the others. But they hear the word with a noble and good heart. They keep it. And they bear fruit with patience. That means consistency, constantly the same. That means year after year. You bear fruit. I'm reminded of Psalms 92 because I taught it in class yesterday. It says that you'll be like the cedars of Lebanon. You'll be like a palm tree. And what will it do? You'll bear fruit in old age and the fruit gets sweeter. Glory to God. This is what happens when you keep letting the word, the word, the word, the word have a place in your life. You start bearing fruit. And let me tell you, it gets sweeter as the days go by. Glory to God. I'll take that for me, I'll let you catch up on the recording on that and shout that. Verse 16. No one when he's lit a lamp. See people, well now he's talking about something different. No, no he's not. This is interesting to me. No one when he has lit a lamp covers it with a vessel or puts it under a bed but sets it on a lampstand. Let me tell you something. The word should be the thing you're known about. That's why I've told that story about the guy that, you know, he had a problem with me. He heard me preaching on the radio. He said, I, I tell you your problem. All you are is the word, the word, the word, the word. And I said, thank you. And he said, it's not a compliment. <laughs> well, okay. I'm sorry you're dissing me and I'm taking it as a compliment. But I have to, have to say when I read this verse, I start realizing the word's got to be the forefront of everything I'm doing here. The entrance of his word brings light. I can't help but understand this, that my spirit is also the lamp of the Lord. So when I get his word on the inside of me, I'm out there on the forefront. My spirit's leading because the word's leading me. That's where I'm going. You read the Bible. That's what I'm going to do. The word. How about you? Are you going to get excited about it? I'll let you out of here in just a minute or two. I mean, come on. Times 10. I'll get you out of here in a timely manner. But hey, why would you light a lamp and cover it or put it under the bed and set your bed on fire? Really? That's what I thought of when I read that. What do you do? You sit on a lampstand that those who enter may see what? The The light. So when you make the word of God the thing that you treasure, then when people cross your life, you literally become a living, breathing Bible for people to read. And you might be the only Bible some ever read. Old Christian country song says that. Heard it as a kid. You might be the only Bible that someone reads. Well, if you don't have the word rooted in you, then what are they reading? A romance novel? Sorry, but that pales in comparison to the love of our God. Wow. Sorry to talk about you like that. (laughs) Y'all know I'm kidding, right? For nothing is secret that will not be revealed, 
nor anything hidden that will not be known and come to light. Let me tell you something. The word of God is how things come to light. It's through the word of God, through the word of God, through the word of God. You come into this church and you keep letting the word of God come into your heart through your ears. Yeah, you watch this by television. You keep letting the word of God come into your heart by what you see, what you hear. And you keep taking this word of God and you start saying, you know what? This word is mine. The more you hear the word of God, the more revelation comes, the more revelation comes, the more it enables your faith to reach into the spiritual and pull those promises into the natural praise. God, this is how the kingdom of God works. Somebody said, I thought faith came by hearing. Faith comes when you're born again. <laughs> Ephesians 2, 8. Everybody focuses on the grace and not the faith. By grace, you have been saved through faith and that not of yourself. What? What faith? Not of yourself. But it's the gift of God. Amen. Given to you the new birth package. <laughs> there it is right there in Ephesians 2. People always focused on the grace part. They miss the, the faith part. It's been given to you. It's the new birth package. But that don't mean you're working it out. It's like a muscle. And you know, we all have biceps. They're all different shapes and sizes up in here. Depending on how we work them out. See, somebody said, well, I, God's given me the faith he's given. No, no, no. For, for the gift that he's given you, he's given you a measure of faith. But the measure of faith in Romans 12 where it says that is not talking about salvation faith. Nope. That faith comes at the new birth package. And you're going to have to hear the word, 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 hear the word. Why? Revelation then hits your life. You say, wait a minute. That applies to me. That's mine. Once you do that, see, that enables activates for a better way of saying it. Your faith now wow. says, I'm taking that. It's mine. And nobody can talk you out of it. Then glory to God. But you got to hear the word. Hey, study your Bible. There's no one anywhere that was rebuked for doing the word. The very first time we came uh, to check out Accelerate, um, I believe my husband came with me that very first time. Um, and I knew that that's what I wanted. I knew that's what I knew that that's where I was called. Um, so me and the kids continued to come back um, every Sunday and every Wednesday. I remember women were thinking that I was a single mom because my husband wasn't there, but I remained faithful and I kept coming. I would say at that point, our marriage was rocky. Um, I know that had we not stopped or started coming to church, I wouldn't be married today. That was something that I didn't ask him and wake him up every morning and say, you coming this time? Or, you know, Wednesday, you coming today? I just kept coming and I'll say, hey, we're going to church. See you later. And like I said, I remained faithful. I prayed for him. And it was like this one empty seat, like one day he's going to fill this seat. <laughs> so that morning was just like our normal chaotic Sunday morning, getting ready to go. Um, I was in the kitchen, you know, getting the kids breakfast and stuff ready and walked back into my room where my husband was normally still asleep and he was up putting on a button up shirt and I remember him just, oh, sorry. <laughs> I remember him buttoning his shirt up that morning and I knew he wasn't going to the gym because he was wearing a button up shirt. So I was like, well, where are you going? And he said, I'm coming with you to church. So I said, okay. And then I walked out, I was like, praise the Lord, he's coming. <laughs> you know, after my husband came to church with me, um, after those months, I was, I think we were at home after church, and I said, well, what caused you to come, like, with us to church? And he said, honestly, I've seen a change in you, and I wanted what you have. I would say right around that time, um, I thought my marriage was over. And that statement alone was confirmation that it's not. And for him to see that change in me, because I kept showing up, now he keeps showing up. And my kids keep showing up. And now we have his little brother. I would say, like, my personal little motto for anything is keep showing up. And I continually showed up. I didn't care that people thought I was a single mom or that I didn't have a husband at home. but. One thing I would not do, Hold on. Um, don't nag them, just pray for them and they'll show up. And that's, that's another thing too, it, 
you showing up and being faithful is going to change the trajectory of everyone behind you and everyone after you because one little thing that I had in my mind to remain determined and to keep showing up, it changed my family. It brought me and my husband closer together. It has really strengthened our family. Like I said, we have custody of his little brother now. So now we're changing his trajectory and those after him. We have custody of my stepdaughter. We're changing the trajectory of her life. So you remaining faithful and diligent is gonna affect more than just you. No one's ever caught a rebuke for doing the word. But there's a lot of them in here when they didn't do the word. Wow. So you step out on the word. This week, you believe God. You look up a scripture. You say, I'm standing on this word. All my needs will be met according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Then the Holy Spirit will say, read the verses before that. So you'll read the verses before that and you'll realize, oh, I've got to give. I've got a partner where God called me to give and partner. And then God will meet all my needs. Glory to God. Then you stand on it. See, but the more you hear this, the more all of a sudden the light's going to come. It's like the light bulb comes on. Wait a minute. All my needs are supposed to be met according to his riches, not according to my need. Right. See, your need doesn't move God. <laughs> your partnership where God tells you to give, that moves God because that's faith. And why is that faith active? Because somehow you got revelation. I'm telling you, it's what happened to me. I'm, I mean, I've got witnesses. My wife and Garrett are two in this story where I'm at pastor's conference in Michigan several years ago. And I've told this story before, but I was struggling. We didn't have that much in the account. Not very much. Just enough to clear what I felt like the Lord told me to give, which was $10,000. And I was like, now I'm having this internal struggle, but your spouse knows you better than anybody. I said, your spouse knows you better than anybody. And so I lay down and Aaron's like, what's wrong? Something's wrong with you. I'm like, oh man, read me like a book again. <laughs> Nothing, baby, nothing's wrong. She said, what's wrong? Well, I feel like the Lord told me to give 10,000. Well, do it. <laughs> My hotel room's so joyful. I said, yeah, but we don't have that much. I mean, we have 10,000, but we don't have much more than that. I don't know if you know, but... Uh, Run a church, you got to have some money. So I was like, well, I'll ask Garrett. He's the budget guy. Maybe he'll say no. <laughs> so Garrett, let's go hang out for a minute. Take me over here. I need to run this errand. I said, hey, by the way, I feel like the Lord told me to give 10000 He said, well, Pastor, I brought an extra check. I said, wow. <laughs> no resistance at all. I, I at least thought he should say, well, we're building an emergency fund and we're doing, you know. But instead he's like, if the Lord told you to do it, Pastor. I see this is, the reason I take you through this is because you're going to go through things like this. And it, the amounts may be different. Don't worry about the amount, okay? That's where I was at the time, okay? And this was a big pill for me to swallow. I mean, like, it's like taking a vitamin when I was a little kid. I remember dad would take those vitamins. I tried to take it, almost got choked on it. <laughs> That's how I felt that day. I'm like, oh, Lord Jesus, help me. Whew. You know, I mean, I got people whose livelihoods depend on me making payroll that week, right? You understand that? So I'm sitting here like, well, whew. probably sweating bullets. But I finally said, write the check. Because I knew it was God. And I'm telling you, not, I'm, I promise you, not even a minute goes by, Dr. Barclay calls my phone. Jeremy said it just like that. I said, yes, sir. The Lord told me to have you receive the offering tonight. <laughs> Why did the Lord tell him to have me receive the offering? Because the Lord was testing me to see, will you obey my voice? When I speak to you, do you hear me? I heard him. I knew it was God. I ran it by my wife. She knew it was God immediately. Go do it. Run it by Garrett. Usually my budget guy. Hold up, pastor. Slow down, pastor. What happened? I got the check, right? I said, write it. And I'm telling you, since that day, there's a release in the spirit. Now, since that time, it's been breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough. There's been no stopping. You talk about locomotive, the blessing of the Lord is on this ministry. And those of you that just became partners and those of you that have been partners, let me tell you, that anointing's on your life. And I don't care what it looks like right now, breakthrough is the season we're in right now because souls are on the line. And Jesus is calling to the highways and the hedges. Time is short. You got to come into the kingdom. You got to be made right with God. 
I'm letting you know that right now. Praise God. I, I look at it and I say, man, look what the Lord has done. Just look at what the Lord has done. And it's not because I'm a genius. It's because he's the genius. I'm nothing but a boy from the sticks of Wheeler. But I'm not going to be dumb and miss what God said to do. I'm going to listen. And I'll tell you right now, you come here, the one thing that's going to be predominant is the word of God. Because I think about this scripture. Look at what Jesus said. Let's not miss the point. You still in Luke 8? Uh, I, I, I told him in class yesterday, I see the runway. I may circle a couple of times, but we're coming in for a landing soon. Okay. Verse eight. Therefore, see, he, he's not done. All this is connected. Take heed. That means pay attention carefully. How you hear. The way you hear is going to determine the way you receive. Take heed how you hear. For whoever has to him more will be given. Whoever does not have, even what he seems to have will be taken from him. Everybody wants to scream, well, that doesn't seem fair. Well, how you hear is very important to allowing the word of God to, to take root in you. I said it already, but write this down. How you hear determines how you receive. It just came out of my spirit. I, couldn't, I tried to hold it till I had the point up here, but I had to get it out. How you hear determines how you receive. Now, now, I'm just saying this. This is connected to living on the basis of the word because if you don't hear right, then your whole life is going to be shifted and it's actually not going to be on the basis of the word because you're not hearing right. Now, I said something, first time I said it, it's been several years ago. I'm going to repeat it today. An offended ear only hears more offense. Once you get offended... You, you're sitting there on any little tiny thing that you disagree with and it just boom, becomes a big, massive deal to you. The news flash is you've got to keep clean ears to hear right. Well, thanks again so much for tuning in with us to today's broadcast on the imminent return of Jesus. While that does conclude today's message, that does not conclude this message in its entirety. And if you would like to hear more, head over to AccelerateChurch.cc and click on the media tab. There you will find the rest of this series as well as other series preached by Pastor Jeremy. Or if you were in the Amarillo area, we would love to meet you in person. We're located at 4400 South Crockett Street here in Amarillo. Our service times are Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. If you're not in the area, we would still love to hear from you. You can write us at info at accelerate.church.cc. We would love to hear from you, pray with you, encourage you. You can even give us a call right here at 806-418. 8913. We can't wait to hear from you and see you on the next television broadcast.